Hello, I'm Justin Ross and I'm back to the third part of our series talking about the Impulse 7000 and our 7010 load box. Here you go, there she is. Um, we've been talking about transthorax competence and why we need to test it and how to test it. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to connect these two devices and utilize them. The first thing I want you to know is that the 7010 load box comes with a set of cables. Here they are. Um, they look like just general test leads. Please make sure you use these cables specifically. They've been engineered uh, to handle the current for the defibrillator over multiple charges or multiple discharges. So they're a little bit thicker than normal, a little heavier duty. If you don't have these, please get a hold of your local Fluke by Medical rep and request a part number to order a set or jump on the Fluke by Medical website, flukebiomedical.com, and uh, get a hold of customer service and request these cables. But this is important. You really do need to use these cables. All right, the other thing that you're going to need is a set of hands-free adapters. Um, most defibs anymore, we're no longer using paddles, so it's much safer to use the hands-free adapters, uh, in which case then the stainless steel plates that come on the 7010 load box can now be removed. There we go. And now the setup. This is how easy this is. We're going to take the black lead that came with the 7010. We're going to go to the output, to the black output, over here to the black, Sternum input of the Impulse 7000. Then we take the red output, the red output over here to the red input of the Impulse 7000. Now simply take our hands free adapter cable and black to black, red to red. Normally, if I'm doing this, I'd have this sitting in front of the Impulse 7000, but to get everything in the camera, I'm going to go ahead and leave it back here because I don't ever like crossing cables. Now, the other side of the hands-free adapter here, I'd simply take this to the multi-function cable of my defibrillator and connect it. That's all you really need to do for the energy output test. Some people prefer to hook up their ECG leads. That's up to you and your service manual. So, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and power on to Impulse 7000. Wait for a second while it powers up. And then I'm going to turn on my favorite feature the old good old fashioned backlit screen because my old eyes aren't what they used to be. And it says select a function. So prior to using this, I need to go into setup and then F4 for more. And right here above F3, it says defib load. It has two options, external load or internal 50 ohm. Yours is probably set at internal 50 ohm unless you've already used your 7010 load box. So internal 50 ohm, what that means is it's utilizing the 50 ohm load pre-built into the Impulse 7000 between the apex and the sternum paddle. To use the 7010, we have to push this, and it should say now external load. Once we do that, we're good enough to go to the defib. And then you see above load, it says 50 ohms. And then on this, I'd have to set it to the corresponding 50 ohms. So most service manuals have you start off testing at the 50 ohm load. Go down at the external or the internal load or set it up and just go ahead and start using it like this. Once it says 50 ohms here, 50 ohms here, I do my energy output test, go back to my service manual and start doing the Joel discharges at what the service manual recommends. So 1, 5, 7, 10, 15, whatever Joel's, the service manual, energy output test right up through. Once you get through the energy output test at the bottom, sometimes you'll eat, find a um, and we mentioned this in the last video, you'll find a graph that shows other ohms they'd like you or other ohm loads they'd like you to test at, or it might reference another page in the manual where you have to go to a chart that gives you the other ohm loads they'd like you to do your energy output test at. So typically the next one would be 25 ohms. Simple enough. We're going to set our 7010 load box at 25 ohms. We're going to go to back on impulse 7000, load and 25 ohms. Make sure the two are corresponding. Energy. And now we do our dis discharge test at 25 ohms. Once they're completed, we simply go to back, load. We already did 50, so we'd probably go to 75 next. But again, please reference that service manual. 75 ohms here, energy, and we do our discharge tests. That's something to mention, because it's gonna happen. If if you're getting busy or whatever and you make the mistake and you have, let's go hit back here, 75 ohms here, 
but you forgot to change the 7010 load box and it only has 25 ohms here, what's going to happen? Good news is you're not going to let the magic blue smoke out of your out of your analyzers. What you will have happen though is you're going to get a reading that's out of spec. It's out of tolerance. It doesn't look right to you. It's not following, it's not following all the other discharge tests. So I'd probably look back at my source menu and go, wait a minute, this is out of tolerance. Uh, what did I do wrong? 25 ohms here, 75 ohms here. Oh, jeez. And redo your testing. It's okay. Now you have the correct setup and you'll get that you should be getting the right answers or the right results. It's that simple to use the 7010 low box to do your energy output tests. Just make sure whatever this is set at, this is set up and you're going to go the whole rest of the way up through your scale. Hey, I thank you for joining us and learning about the 7010 load box, the Impulse 7000, and Trans Thrax Competence.